You're watching Worldwide Exchange. I'm Ross Westgate here. The headlines this morning from around the world. France's finance minister insists Europe is very close to a deal on Greece. Heard that before as Eurogroup ministers arrive for their latest summit in Brussels. Swiss Re says claims related to Hurricane Sandy are $900 million. The insurer admits that figure, though, may continue to rise as ongoing recovery efforts make estimates difficult. And in the U.S., Consumers filled up their shopping carts and then they just kept coming back for more. Early estimates suggest sales up nearly 13% over the long holiday weekend. You're watching Worldwide Exchange, bringing you business news from around the globe. All right, if you just joined us stateside, I hope you've had a good weekend, possibly a very long weekend if you didn't work on uh, Friday. Have you been out shopping? We'll talk about it. This is where we're going to uh, indicate at the moment right now. The Dow has called down some 70 points. The Nasdaq is called down uh, nearly 14 points. And the S&P 500 at the moment is called down some uh, seven and a half or eight points. Uh, and that's after good gains last week, uh, which included the uh, European stocks as well. The FTSE CMC Global 300 is down two points. But uh, European stocks did even better. The Dow, Nasdaq, S&P up nearly, uh, well, 35 to 4% respectively. The European stocks, the DAX and the CAC up 5, 5.6% today, down half a percent, a little bit less for the Zetra DAX and the EBEX, the FTSE down four tenths. So, US markets back to business as usual today after closing out that short holiday week with the first positive Black Friday since 2008. The Dow Jones, as I say, up above 13,000 for the first time since election day, up 3.3%. Joining us now is Piers Curran, head of trading and founder of Amplify Trading. Piers, thanks for joining us. We talked a week, the, the, Friday, Friday, yeah. the Friday before last week, and, uh, and then I wrote about it actually in CTM and said, if you're a trader, you might think next week we were going to get a bounce. Um, and we did. What, yeah. I mean, qu quite a good bounce. Look, 5.5% for the DAX, the NASDAQ composite up 4%. Yeah. Big bounce. Well, big bounce. Um, bigger than, I think, I mean, I was looking for the bounce, but I don't think I was expecting it to be quite that sharp. Um, I think what that will mean, though, I mean, I think that, that, that was the best trading opportunity left in 2012. In year. Um, so I think if you missed it, you've you got to be a little bit cautious now about piling in at the start of this week. You know, I think we can still maintain uh, um, the levels yeah. reached on that bounce, but I think it'll be a little bit more choppy. Um, I think I mean, it and it came on the back of the, the I think the US market was down about 5% since yeah. the US elections. The S&P was off 10, 11% from the September highs. Yeah, that's right. And overextension. I mean, I, I think it was a pretty, it was a pretty straightforward call I know I know it's always easy to say that in yeah. hindsight of course but, but we did I, I, we, we, yeah. we did call it though. we did yeah. um, and but what do we do now yeah. I mean, that's what people are going to be interested in I think that we're probably going to be range bound for the next fortnight I think that you know the Greek deals going to get done today um, I think that but that's to a certain extent already priced in and a lot of that bounce last week was also due to noises on that issue so I think Greece will get their money mid-December um, and then it's just looking at I don't know there's going to be fiscal cliff comments positive and negative and I think there's been a bit of a lull because of Thanksgiving and so on um, on comments on that front and so I think this week you know that that rhetoric is going to step up a little bit and already over the weekend there's some Republicans maybe suggesting all right we, we're, we're okay with tax hikes but we want a bit more from the Democrats in terms of spending cuts so I think there's still going to be some fiscal cliff nervousness yeah. that's going to create that range um, but I think you know ultimately we can still rise from here into year end whether we're going to reach the high of the year or, or even break the high of the year possibly well, not. What is the, what's the mentality of um, asset managers going to be going into you know bearing in mind that you know, they're yeah. looking at their sort of year end performance figures. Yeah, yeah. Um, well that's true I think I think at the moment well if you look at the S&P it's up uh, something like 11 percent year to date so you know, that's remarkably better than in what it was looking a week ago. So I think they'll be breathing a sigh of relief. I think that normally we get a traditional year-end rally. Whether that's going to come in quite in force as it has done in previous years, yeah. probably not. We've just had it, I think. But that, that, I mean, that was, yeah. last week was a that chunk was of the year-end rally. Yeah, I mean, I think going into next year, I think next year will be a different kind of story. This year, you know, it's the US that's really outperformed um, markets wise. And I think next year that'll flip and you'll probably see the emerging market performance 
retake that top spot in the US, you know, for the fiscal. Well, that's an interesting reason. idea. I mean, the, the other question, of course, is what happens with the, uh, you know, earnings. US corporates and earnings. Yeah. I think, well, they had their, they had their bad quarter. Um, I think that it's not going to improve dramatically in fourth quarter, but I think you'll see, well, you can see the consumer in the US is on fire. And again, that's not a surprise. The consumer confidence levels have been up at five year highs. So I think we'll get a better quarter four. Um, I think companies like Apple particularly will probably have a, a strong Christmas and rebound sharply. But I think next year it's going to be more about it's more about the emerging market space. I think what, what, based on what? I think that China have gone through their soft patch and I think there's signs they're coming out of that. If you look at their PMI number mm. last week it was back above 50. Um, so I think that that story's come just in time actually because if the US are going to go through well they are going to have a fiscal squeeze how large that'll be still yeah. yet to be determined but so that's going to be a drag of course so you need the other big economies to pick up that global slack. The question like. is is wh which assets benefit yeah. from that? Well, I mean, I know, you know, even the Shanghai market, is, yeah. I mean, like local EM markets have not been the best place to be. No, but I think that'll change right. next year. And I think if China can stabilise and their growth rate, you know, might stabilise around 8%, and then I think you'll find that China stock markets are going to do well. I think the commodity space will, will perform well. If you look at economies that are over-reliant on China, like Brazil or Australia, for example, or South Korea, you know, these are going to be areas that will benefit from that Chinese improving story. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about the US consumer, so we'll, we'll hold that space. Just want to, as we go through, because you, you know, as we go through the fiscal cliff chats, yeah, how much are we going to swing around? On, I as think, you said, the good headlines, the bad headlines. Yeah. I mean, you know, what's, how much at the margin is this going to swing us about? I think that the, the 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 fear about this fiscal cliff peaked at the end of two weeks ago. Um, I think that we're probably going to see a swing in the S and P between, I'd say. You know, 1395 is an important level that we got back up above last week. Now, this is an important support level. We've kind of been testing it a little bit this morning, I think. If we can just keep our noses above 1395, then 1430 is a key technical resistance. And I think that, that might be a nice range to, to 